Hello guys, um, so I've just made this, um, 160 foot tall short scop quadruple looper. It's pretty intense. There's also some negative Gs. It's kind of like shockwave it over Texas. Um, I'll just do a rundown of the ride. I mean, I'm, this is just something I made a while ago, you know, like a few days ago. Alright, so we have the 160 foot lift tilt, and it just uses a, I would just say these boosts. I don't have booster wheels, just pretend these are, but they're not. Um, these booster pads, I'm just going to call them that for now, uh, long, move you up the lift tilt around 13 miles an hour. A little fast, but it can just give the train some momentum still. You get maybe a little bit of air time in the back row on this 51 degree drop. It's around a 155 degree drop as well, or 155 foot drop. Not exactly sure, but you know, I think like 160 actually. These are like really intense as you can see. Um, and so like then, you know, you have this, um... <clears throat> mid course here, the air time will go into it gives you a lot of air time. Mid course doesn't slow you down at all. Go through a few drawn out turns, not really, but you know. And then, uh, <clears throat> so you go through these little bends. They don't really do much, but you know. Then you go through the really good air time hill if you're in the back. You get pulled through it. Go through a double down. A little bit of a straight second, but no worries. It just gets you ready for this next intense loop, vertical loop. Not as intense as these, the, two, the first two, but still pretty intense. But not as intense. You get some insane negative G's here. You got this ba this bank turn. Not really an overbank, just there, kind of. You got another amazing airtime hill. Followed by the final loop, vertical loop on this ride. Which isn't, again, as intense as any of the lo vertical loops on this ride. And then these two back-to-back -back airtime hills are super strong with the negative G's. As you can see up here, just like, you know. Hold on. Let me watch this. Look, look at how strong this is to see. Like, look. In the back row, you just get freaking flung, you know? Just get flung. And then you have some more positive Gs here with these helixes. Not really, but you know. You might get a few, you know? Then you have some more airtime here. A few more, and then you just turn around and then just kind of turn into the end of the ride, you know? Alright, um. <clears throat> this is a Schwartz Cop. It looks like Intamin Track, but I don't really know how to use. This is the closest thing to Schwartz Cop Track I could find. I'm not gonna use Premier, um, their high stress, but. We'll just take a ride next, alright? Alright, um, let's take a ride on a very, very intense, unrealistic, quadruple vertical loop coaster. <coughs> it's going up at around 12 miles an hour, actually. It, it goes around 13 later. Average speed's like 12, though. See ya. Alright, um, <coughs> so it's turning into the drop. Very intense now, as you can see. It might be a bit laggy, but you know, it's still it's still is going to be pretty intense when you look. Like that's that looks very intense. That one as well. You get a really good pop of ejector right there. And then you these turns don't do much, but you might get like a lateral or two, you know, one or two lateral be some awesome airtime here with the double down. And then you have another intense vertical loop. Not as intense, like I said, but. Still pretty intense. Air turn hill. Bank turn. Fix the train around. Awesome air turn hill. Last vertical loop. Still pretty intense, kind of. And you have some awesome air turn there. Some turns that can provide a few positive G's, you know? Then you have the last air time hills on the rye, like up here. They're really good at giving air time, especially if you were in the back. But I can't go in the back row on Ultimate Coast there. And then, you know, it's pretty much the end. And then one last thing is, um, <clears throat> unfortunately, this ride just, because I'm pretty sure the GP probably designed the train for Ultimate Coaster, most likely. No, I'm just kidding. But they, if they did, yeah, they obviously did this with over-the-shoulder restraints. Just pretend they're lap bars, because if I see, if I were the designer of this train, I would have put lap bars. I don't know why they those shoulder restraints exist. Like, it's just Ultimate Coaster's developers, that's all. Um, and that's pretty much the ride. Um... So I'll, so I, since this video wasn't too long, I'm going to upload again this weekend. And yeah, so, alright, thank you for watching. See you all next time.